The question was asked, what ugly truth about yourself did marriage reveal and how did you overcome it on this segment of It's Scary to Be Married? What's up, Brave Arts community? This is Sean Heineman here with another segment of It's Scary to Be Married, wanting you to love fearlessly. And today's topic is a personal one. What ugly truth about yourself did marriage reveal and how did you overcome it? Let me say, uh, I take full accountability for the part that I played wrong in going through a divorce. And actually, I'm going to share this with you in this video or if you listen it, listening to it via podcast. The ugly truth about myself that marriage revealed was that I sucked as a team player. I thought I was doing a good job, but obviously I wasn't. Uh, I was always prioritizing myself opposed to my family. I felt like if I was in a good place, then my family would automatically thrive because then I would give, you know, to them. But it's actually the opposite. And this is something that I've learned from uh, women, especially wives, they always prioritize their families. And sometimes it's even to their detriment. Let's let's get it clear. I do think that, uh, you know, you should show yourself some love and stuff like that. But at the same time, when you marry, you should uh, prioritize your family first and then you come last. I think that's a, a trait of a true leader is making sure that your troops are, are taken care of, you know, that their all their needs are met. And then yours. Uh, so that's one of the places where I went wrong because just being young and immature, just always prioritizing me and then my family, that was wrong on my behalf. And now that I'm older, I can see the error in my ways. Uh, then the second one, I can keep, I can go on and on. I'm not going to hold you all day about me and my, my problems, but I will give you some that I believe really stood out and that my ex-wife and I even had a conversation about it while going through the divorce is I was emotionally underdeveloped, meaning I didn't know how to express myself and what I was feeling. I was shut down and then go silent. Now, some people, when they are angry or frustrated, they just lash out, you know, and then they wish they could take those words back because they say things that they never should have said. But for me, being emotionally underdeveloped, it was more of, I didn't know what should I say? Was this going to hurt or not? You know, trying to always like walk on eggshells. Uh, that's, that's not always healthy for me. And then that isn't healthy towards, you know, my ex spouse either because they don't know how to handle me because I'm not giving them anything as far as uh, feedback that's going to help our marriage thrive. So being emotionally underdeveloped is a process, I, especially I believe for most men, um, we rarely grow up knowing how to process our emotions. The other uh, issue that I had was unresolved childhood trauma. <clears throat> now, this is interesting because things that was traumatic to me growing up in the hood, like I thought it was normal. There was so much stuff going on in the hood growing up in Cleveland. Um, things, some things that I won't even talk about, <clears throat> but I will say that I just thought it was normal because I'm like, this is what everybody deals with, right? But it affected me going into my adulthood and especially going into my marriage. Uh, and, and I got a lot of this revelation in therapy and I'll talk about that later. But I will say that if you're unaddressed childhood trauma, if you don't deal with it, it will deal with you in adulthood. And I think we really have to go deeper in understanding the definition of trauma and how it uh, affects us. Because I think for most people of color, I think if we do grow up in these hoods, we do think that it's normal when it's actually not. Then my love was conditional. Let me explain. You know, if we fell out over something and we couldn't resolve it, I would be cold and callous, right? And being like that, that put the other person in a nervous state, always walking on eggshells. Like I was putting her in that position where, and I talked about that earlier about walking on eggshells. I don't think that's healthy for anybody. Cause again, you won't, you can't allow that person to express themselves. And then how can you come to a resolution if you're not um, telling them what's going on in your world? So 
my conditional love was that shutting down, I don't want to talk for a couple of days, just not knowing how to process my feelings. And uh, that's not fair to anyone because it leaves that other person out in the cold. I will say, plus I was immature and I was young and I was 24 at the time I got married. She was 31. She had a 12 year old son. And now that I look back, um, raising somebody half my age, that was a lot to handle. And I think some of it came down to me thinking that I can handle everything, you know, being in the church and loving God and all these other things. I just thought, you know, Jesus will fix everything. But I mean, and he can, don't get me wrong, but you got to do the necessary work too. And that was something that I lacked because I didn't get all the necessary help that I need needed at that time we could we went to counseling and stuff like that but it needed to be continual something that was a weekly thing that always went on and it always happened you know every here and there so i think that was something that uh hurt us as well because we really didn't have that third party and it's interesting because back then you know i, I had my old youtube channel and things of that nature and, and and trying to help everybody and you know when my marriage was failing and it's just like i felt uh i felt like i just like i wasn't being you know honest or straight up and it wasn't that i think i had more of like imposter syndrome but over time i've learned that i gave great tools but when it came for me and my application i couldn't apply everything that I learned and that's where I failed and I think that's why when I was going through a divorce I was like man I didn't hold up my end of the bargain so now that I'm doing this this time around I'm in a, a, a healthier place I'm grateful and I have you have seen me uh quote-unquote fail publicly for those who know me from when I had my old podcast and to seeing what I'm doing now uh this time around doing my social media and stuff like this it's, it's almost like helping keeping me accountable right so as i teach you this i'm i'm learning the same thing i'm going through it and we're all learning together i am not the guru we're, we're learning this together okay how did i overcome it self-awareness i believe self-awareness is everything uh you know my ex-wife told me about how she felt about my issues and only did when I was going through the divorce that I heard what she said. I'm sure she's repeated these things to me over and over again, but I wasn't hearing it. You know, I was just too stubborn setting my ways and, and unaddressed things that I didn't deal with. Uh, it clouded my judgment and me um, acting upon the things that she required of me. And I wasn't doing them. But it was actually just through the divorce that I was like, oh, I can see that now. You know, so sometimes we have to go through things in order to get it. But self-awareness is key. If, if you have no self-awareness and you're trying to tell somebody something, it's just like beating a dead horse. It's, it's not going to help. That person got to have self-awareness. Also, reading, reading self-help books, reading books on marriage, reading books on divorce, reading books on, on finances, things that just helped me in this process and even helped me make my decision and even following through with my divorce because I, I struggled for a long time wondering, you know, should I actually go through this divorce or not, you know? But reading some self-help books and things of that nature helped me make my decision and let me know that I was I was basically gonna be all right, you know? Because sometimes as a Christian, you're thinking, oh my God, God hates divorce and, and these things and he's not going to bless me after this, you know, so I need to do something with myself and you, you get nervous. But I realized that uh, God's love isn't isn't like that. His love for us is unconditional and he's been able to bless me to be able to remarry again um, to a, a phenomenal woman. And I believe a lot of that came from me forgiving. I think... For some people, you won't be able to get to the next level unless you forgive. If you can't forgive, you're going to have to work on that unforgiveness because for unforgiveness, it, it's a poison. All it's doing is hurting you and that other person, they live in their life. So learn to forgive. I ain't saying you got to forget. I, I understand that, but it's more of uh, forgiveness for yourself because people are going to do what they want to do regardless. 
And last but not least, how did I overcome it? Through prayer and therapy. I believe having a spiritual foundation kept me grounded and prevented me from doing things that I would have regretted today. So I'm grateful. Uh, as you know, I'm a man of faith. So I believe my faith and, and prayer has helped keep me grounded during that season where I just didn't uh, act out and do things that possibly could have hurt other people in the process. So I'm grateful for that. And therapy showed me where I needed to improve. And at times therapy can be uncomfortable, but it is necessary for your growth. Uh, if you can get therapy, please, it's, it's worth it. Um, because we spend money on gym memberships and all these other things and ways to improve, but we're not working on our mind mentally. So make sure that you get a good therapist. If you find a great one, hold on to them. Uh, I hope this video was able to help somebody. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are watching this on YouTube. And if you are listening to the podcast, don't forget to leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. I would love to hear from you. Give me one star, five star, whatever works best for you. Share this video with someone who might be going through a divorce and maybe they need to do a little self-reflection of their own. This is Sean Heineman at It's Scary to Remarry. Once again, you love fearlessly. Take care of people.